Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year. Just like my Christmas shopping, this Christmas special is last minute. I got my Super Mario tree back there. Look how cute it is. I'm trying to be in the Christmas spirit. I'm super thankful for you guys. Such an amazing year. I accomplished so many goals just in my personal life, professional life, you name it. And I couldn't do it without you guys. I'm extremely thankful for the support. So what are we doing today? I don't have a plan. All of my Christmas specials in the past were unorganized because this holiday always sneaks up on me. It literally felt like Christmas was 15, 20 days away. And I was like, oh, I got plenty of time. And it's always Christmas Eve where I scramble. I was at Dollar Tree scrambling to get some Christmas cards for some friends and last minute gift ideas at Walmart. And it was just a mess. But now I'm here. And I was like, you know what? I think it would be cool if I made like a marathon showcasing some of my previous Christmas specials. I haven't done many on this channel. Some of them, not bad. I think you guys would get a kick. You might not have seen some of these because they're buried deep in the trenches of decades of YouTube. So without any further ado, let's begin. Let's go ahead and start the ABE Christmas special marathon, ladies and gentlemen. So the first one we're going to do is... The first Christmas special, and this was me giving my Christmas memories with the NES and what it means to me and the spirit of Christmas and talking about some of the games for the NES that, that I've enjoyed playing through the years. So without any further ado, let's begin. Hello everybody, this is 8-Bit Eric and... Super Mario, and we wish you guys a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, Quantica, Feliz Navidad, Happy Hanukkah, everybody. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and Mario, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful that you're never gonna be a YouTube partner because your show smells and stinks like shit. Alright, well... Thanks, Mario. That's nice to know. But on the bright side, everybody, this is going to be a special Christmas episode of the 8-Bit Eric Show. And... Bah, um, bah, well, thanks, Mario. That's way being the holiday spirit, jerk. Anyways, I'm going to share with you my first most memorable video game experience during the holidays, which I love the holidays. And it was always, you know running downstairs and seeing what new video games I got and what toys and everything but there was one present that I got that it changed my life forever and it's a little it's not emotional but it's just it impacted me and I wouldn't be you know anything that I am as you can see video games are my life and that's when I got this for Christmas. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, this isn't the first one that I really got. You know, my system that I got for Christmas, I sold a long time ago. And I really wish I didn't because that was my system. So Lord knows where my Nintendo's at. You know, maybe it's broken. Maybe it's in somebody's basement or attic. Maybe somebody destroyed it. Who knows? The NES forever changed my life. And when I was a kid, it was amazing. Like, the, you know, there's Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt and the Ninja Turtle games on there and Skate or Die and Captain Skyhawk, Double Dragon, all sorts of games. The Legend of Zelda. And, you know, as a kid, it was just wonderful. It was just the best thing ever. And the holidays always brought the cheer of the family getting together and just, you know, plugging in the controllers to the NES and just playing together. And I think that's where Nintendo succeeded when they made the NES, is that it brought families together. And Nintendo still does that to this day with the Wii and the Wii U, hopefully. You know, bring everybody together in front of the TV and just play some games. And some of the best memories of my life were with the NES. The Nintendo Entertainment System made its way 
until living rooms of North Americans in 1985. And it helped revitalize the gaming industry after the game crash of 1983. Included with such peripherals such as Rob, the Zapper, and innovations as the D-pad on the controller, and games that were just classic, like the Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, and more. People loved the NES in the 80s. People would gather around and just play games. And when I knew that I would be receiving a present with the NES inside, I was ecstatic. Even Nintendo's commercials were epic. I mean, what six-year-old kid in their right mind wouldn't want any ass after seeing this? Nintendo's marketing of the NES was second to none. It was pure genius. They had it all covered. Especially when it came to game selection. A lot of people say that whatever your generation starts off with as far as consoles go, that that's the thing that you hold the most to heart. And I guess since the first system I ever remember playing was the NES, I guess that's why it's so dear to me. But it was so great. I mean, I can't get enough of it. Now, I have a good number of NES games. I don't have them all. But the NES is perhaps my most favorite system to collect for. I have about 300 games or so. The thing about the NES is that they're just so fun to collect for me. I mean, you have all the classics, you have the rare titles, you have the common titles, but the nostalgia value is just high for me. It's just fun to collect. Like, you know, I get off to talking to other NES collectors about what games they have. I'll sit there and talk Ninja Gaiden or Mickey Mouse Capade with them all day long. As I mentioned before, Nintendo had a, a massive library of official and unofficial games. Anything you could think of was on here. Franchises that were classic, games based on movies, video games, and more. Of course, you can't talk about Nintendo without talking about Super Mario Brothers, which more than likely is almost every single video gamer's like, first experience in the world of Nintendo growing up in the 80s. I know it was mine, because this game was packed in with almost every single Nintendo along with Duck Hunt. This game is considered the classic platforming game of our time. Super Mario Bros. 2 gets a lot of a bad rap from people in the gaming industry, however I think it's a classic and it helped introduce several elements into the Super Mario Bros. franchise. Sure it was a clone of Doki Doki Panic. But if you think about it, not many games are original anymore, especially in today's society. Everything's a shooter now, so... I mean, Mario Brothers had to be different. Lost Levels was almost exactly the same thing as the original Super Mario Brothers, and I think it was a good decision by Nintendo of America to just... make Super Mario Brothers 2 different. Super Mario Brothers 3 is my favorite NES game of all time, and I think it's... like the icing on the cake as far as establishing Nintendo as a force to be reckoned with, it was everywhere. Cereal, cartoons, shoes, clothes, McDonald's toys, Super Mario Bros. 3 had it all. And to this day, even 20 years later, PETA's coming after Nintendo over the Tanuki suit. So I guess Nintendo did something right. Legend of Zelda, one of Nintendo's classic, most beloved franchises, and my personal favorite, started off on the NES. If you haven't had a chance to play it, I think you've been living underneath a rock. This is one of the most classic NES games, and it's just nostalgic to me. Uh, I remember playing this as a kid and being completely lost, but that was the beauty of it. Mega Man is another classic series that originated on the NES. The games have a history for being great, yet very difficult. And 
There's just something about an NES Mega Man game that makes me smile. When Mega Man 9 and 10 came out and they were in 8-bit form, it was just great because it felt like the series had gone full circle and it was paying homage to this the classic charm that the NES Mega Man series have. The music is great, the gameplay is great, I can't get very far in them, but man, Mega Man is great. One series that I am going to recommend is one that I feel is actually one of Nintendo's most underrated franchises, Star Tropics. This game is almost like Zelda. It has several elements taken from those series, and it's a little bit quirky and difficult, but it's a fun game nevertheless. It's a shame that they haven't capitalized on this franchise because it does have kind of a big cult following. Now, I do have a confession to make. As a kid, I kind of knew I was getting an NES, not just because I asked for it, but because one day I was playing around in the garage and I saw a whole bunch of stuff covered underneath my blanket, which that looked suspicious and my parents really didn't have a good job of hiding anything, but I lifted over the, the, the cover, like the blanket, and I saw it. The box. The box. Yeah, and you have no idea how hard it was for a six-year-old, seven-year-old version of me to sit there and keep quiet about it and not be excited. Like, Christmas couldn't hurry any faster. It took years in my mind. And it's hard to just sit there and be like, oh my god, there's an NES in my garage and I can't open it and play with it, you know? And... That's what made Christmas so special when you're a kid. It, it's just, it feels like it, like the weeks and days leading up to it just, you know, take a while to get there and that time is treasured. Now it doesn't even feel like Christmas anymore aside from the decorations and everything, but Christmas just comes and goes way too fast nowadays and I think everybody as a whole should just sit back, grab the D-pad, and enjoy the ride. God, it was pretty deep. That should be a song. Well, everybody, I think that's it for the Christmas special. I hope you enjoyed it. This is 8-Bit Eric, and happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in 2012. Be safe, everybody. Eat some cookies, drink some eggnog, and just sit down and then enjoy the time with your loved ones. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Do you think I would really let your Christmas be happy and joyful? <laughs> I was sent here by somebody. Somebody who has a beef with you. <laughs> and you won't get back what is rightfully yours. The Maxi 15 cartridge. <laughs> What are you talking about? That son of a... Mamma mia! So you see at the end of the video, there was like an appearance by the Grinch. This was at the time I was kind of trying to do like light skits in my videos. And I had the Grinch and I had Super Mario and it was just cringe. I was inspired by like AVGN and Pat the NES Punk where they would have like the Rob the Robot and everything like that. And that was a different time on this channel. And wow, every time I go back and watch some of that stuff, it is memories for sure. Now, next up, this was a couple years later. I think this was 2014. I decided to do a nice little cozy Christmas special uh, again with Mario, but I was talking about Super Mario 64 and my Christmas with the N64, which was another magical Christmas for me. I mean, I remember finding that console secretly hidden and, and, and you know, my parents got it ahead of time and, and I was just excited for it. That N64 era was a different time. So let's let's watch this. All right, Mario, since it's Christmas, I'm in the mood to go ahead and read you your favorite Christmas story. So, uh, 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 let me begin. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was slipping, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that a top loader 
would soon be there. Oh, hey guys, I didn't see you there. <laughs> hey Mario, we got guests. Well, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and end the Christmas story for right now because I guess it's time for a Christmas special. But you know what? It would not be Christmas without some milk and cookies. After all, I'm on Santa's diet, like the shirt says. So let me go ahead and get my snacks. And no, I don't eat off the floor. It's just that's where I had them. I don't know why I had them on the floor. Yeah. Mario, I'm not sharing. All right, guys, so the holidays are here. The end of 2014's upon us, and it was a great year. I just had the jolly old spirit come inside of me. That didn't sound right either. In spirit of the holidays, I am going to go ahead and share with you a handful of games that I remember playing through various Christmases growing up. First on the list, Super Mario 64. Now, when the Nintendo 64 came out for the first time, this was one of the most hyped things ever. I remember reading in magazines almost every month something new about the Nintendo 64 and it felt like it was never going to come out. The anticipation was just very extreme. I don't think I felt the anticipation the same way for any other console ever since. There was just a huge hype machine behind the Nintendo 64 and the first time that I saw screenshots of Super Mario 64, my jaw hit the floor. A 3D Mario game. Holy shit. Holy shit. Just being able to control Mario in an immersed 3D environment and being able to explore was just out of this world. And Mario 64 innovated 3D platforming as we know it. I think it's one of the best platformers ever in the history of the world. And without it, we wouldn't have such a great genre that we do now. Everything about this game was memorable, from the music, to the way that Mario talked, yeah, you buddy, to the adventure, to all the secrets. This game just kept me occupied for months. And it just remains as one of my greatest Christmas memories because that day that I opened my Nintendo 64 for Christmas was just magical. I literally sat in front of that TV for hours and hours and hours and just played the hell out of Super Mario 64. One of my other fondest memories actually has to deal with another Nintendo system. It is with the Nintendo Wii. Now, I did get my Wii during launch week, so it was about Thanksgiving time when it came out. But that Christmas holiday was when I experienced more of the Wii titles available. Twilight Princess on the Wii was the shit! I had so much fun playing with it. It's one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. I think it's the perfect blend of Zelda exploration with a little bit of dark, you know, side of it. I love the realistic cutscenes. I love the, you know, tone of the whole game. Uh, Twilight Princess was just something that I've never played before at the time. And I spent a lot of hours that Christmas playing that game. Now, I'm going to go ahead and share a not so fond Christmas memory, yes. I actually got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for Christmas one year. Yeah, imagine that. Now, everybody knows about that game. Countless reviewers have reviewed it, and people have just tried to cope with the shit that is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But as a kid, you just dealt with it. You had a shitty game like this game. You didn't know how to beat it. You couldn't get anywhere in the game. It was just nothing but countless times of frustration and just rage quitting, throwing the controller against the TV. But growing up, what did you have to compare that to? You could say it was a shitty game, but you were stuck with it. For some reason, I don't ever remember telling my parents, hey, this game sucks, and making them return it. Nowadays, shit, I don't think twice about returning a game, but Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde played a huge part in my childhood, and that one fateful Christmas that I opened up that package and fell victim to the cool looking cover will live in infamy forever. And well guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this Christmas video. I hope you guys have a happy holiday season and a happy new year. If I don't see you guys between now and then, you can go fuck yourselves. Just kidding. Happy holidays. Well Mario, what do you say we go ahead and leave these guys with a nice little Christmas carol? Um. <laughs> Cho 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 cho
So yeah, another blast from the past, you know, memories with the NES, the N64, and Christmas is always about video games. I don't know if, if you guys can relate, but I always felt like it was about video games, and that's what just makes that nostalgia, like, about it. You know, just the memories of sitting there, unpacking a game, playing with your brother, your sister, your cousins, having your parents watch, you know. It's it's times like that that you wish you can get back. Now, I wanted to share the next video, which is, again, kind of like a recap of some Christmas memories. I, I was doing these memories videos on the channel for a little bit, like Contra and Super Mario memories and other things like that. And, and I wanted to do these at least once a week, but they kind of just never came to fruition. I might bring them back, but I did make a Christmas memories of it. So let's check it out. I actually kind of tried to do some editing on this one. My favorite Christmas memory of all time was the Christmas that I got my NES system. Now, my parents weren't the best Christmas gift hiders ever. In fact, they usually don't wrap the gifts while they're hiding them. So when we find them, it's like awesome because we know exactly what we're getting. And on this particular Christmas, we stumbled upon our NES complete, brand new, in box, Boy, were me and my older brother ecstatic. We discovered it in the garage, and man, was that the longest Christmas wait ever. It sucks when you're about seven years old, and you just want to play Nintendo, and you don't have one of your own, and then it's just feet away, hiding in your garage for months. But man, when we got to open that NES, it was so freaking sweet to finally be able to play Forget all the rest of the gifts. Let's play some Mario Duck Hunt and just to have some fun. And this actually kind of happened again after a few more years and we had the Super Nintendo. But this time, me and my brother wisened up and we decided to go ahead and open the gift when my parents would be out of the house. If we knew they weren't going to be home for a while, we just went ahead and opened it, set it up played Super Mario World behind their backs and this went on for a long while but it was such a mi much nicer Christmas because we didn't have to wait to play it we had it we were sneaking it and we had to put on the fake face of course once Christmas hit like oh wow we got a Super Nintendo thanks mom and dad after that I started knowing what I was getting like the 64 I knew ahead of time and somehow I convinced my mom to let me have it early so Christmas came early then the GameCube I bought on my own and then from there every system I have now is mine but those first two the NES and the SNES were just so special because it was a gift that was a surprise and you find it and it's just waiting for that Christmas to come and just open those gifts it's that was what what being a kid in the late 80s, early 90s was all about. It's just playing Nintendo and getting that system for the first time and experiencing it for yourself. I mean, you always go to a friend's house and they have all the cool games and all that and you're stuck with scraps, but when you get that Nintendo, man, it's such a great feeling. So yeah, nice little Christmas memories. Now, I wanted to switch things up like in 2015 and 2016 and I wanted to do some reviews of some... Uh, Christmas games. I wanted to review some of the worst Christmas games of all time. And, and I, this one, I was putting some real effort into the videos. I was trying to be like a, a big retro gaming YouTube like sensation. And just let's have fun with this. This is a good video. I like this is one of my favorite videos on the channel. Hey guys, what's up? This is 8 Bit Eric, and today I'm going to share with you my worst Christmas video games of all time. So. Yeah, let's deck the halls with balls of shit, why don't we? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on the Wii is a game based on the classic claymation Christmas special. 
The story mode offers four mini games that are surprisingly pretty easy to beat. If these games were the greatest mini games of all time, that wouldn't be too bad. However, these are so boring and monotonous that you will find yourself wanting to play something else. This game comes across as a blatant cash in on the Rudolph Claymation franchise. While it is cheap, this game really is below filler or shovelware on the Wii. There's tons of great other games that you can enjoy over the holidays. Elf Ballin 1 and 2 on the Game Boy Advance is one of those obscure Christmas titles where you don't know what the heck they were thinking. The object of the game is Santa Claus controls a bowling ball where he knocks down his helpers. That is pretty freaking violent. I don't see no Christmas cheer in that. And it is a really subpar bowling game. There's also a weird one where there's elves clothed in speedos and you knock them down. So yeah, I don't know what they were smoking when they made this game. We Wish You a Merry Christmas is another game on the Wii where it has several Christmas mini games, if you want to call them that, where you do everything from Christmas card writing to Santa, to decorating your tree, to setting your fireplace, and other real fun, joyous things that every kid wants to do. Yeah, another Christmas cash-in. Luckily, these games have never really been too expensive, so I guess you're not at much of a loss, but it's just really kind of... Meh. Next up is Elf, based on the Christmas movie starring Will Ferrell. Can you believe that they made a side-scrolling platform game out of this? Uh, the Game Boy Advance had everything on it, didn't it? And unfortunately, they had a whole bunch of subpar side-scrolling platforms such as Elf that really sucked. And last but not least, continuing on the holiday movie Christmas cash-in video game craze we are looking at the escape clause the santa claus 3 for the game boy advance yes holy shit has tim allen been in any video game that was good i don't think so in this game you control tim santa claus allen and side scrolling action that's so horrible Basically, this is another repeat of what Elf was. You got two of the same game, and they're both just as equally bad. It is ridiculous. Who in their right mind thought to make a Santa Claus 3 video game? And well, guys, that is it for my worst Christmas games of all time. I'll see you next year. Remember, I'll be checking my list and checking it twice. Gonna see if your mom's naughty or nice. Peace. Happy New Year. So yeah, real quick, comment down below if you know any of these Christmas games that I've missed out on that I didn't review or cover. If there's some missing Christmas games, let me know down below. Now, let's talk about Christmas movies. That's always a topic in the live streams. I did a top five Christmas movies video, and let's go ahead and check this out, guys. I, I just love like Home Alone. <laughs> Every year I watch it, so let's watch it. Hey guys, what's up? This is 8 Eric. This is my half-ass thrown together Christmas extravaganza special. This is my top five Christmas movies of all time. Now I know people do these all the time. Your top five might be different than mine, but mine's better. I'm just kidding. Love you guys. So let's begin. So number five is going to be Ernest Saves Christmas. I am a big Ernest guy. Ernest scared stupid. Ernest goes to jail. You name it. If it's an Ernest movie, I've seen it. Even some of those horrible ones. But Ernest Saves Christmas has always been the one Ernest movie where when you catch it on TV, it just feels like something special because I remember as a kid watching it and wondering why I never really got to see it too often. I, as a matter of fact, I can't recall the last time it was shown on TV, but luckily it's on Netflix. Ernest is just one of those charming characters where when you combine him with the holiday of Christmas, magic happens. My next favorite Christmas movie is actually a pretty recent one, Elf with Will Ferrell. If you haven't seen this movie, you're missing out. 
I really like elves. I don't know if you can tell. They're one of my favorite things. This is hilarious. A young orphaned person raised as an elf is going to New York to find his human dad. In the process, wacky Christmas hijinks happen. I mean, it, it's a fantastic movie. It's a true Christmas classic and definitely worth a look. Coming up next, what the fuck was it called? Coming up next, Jingle All The Way. Yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger has to get his kid a high demand toy. We've all been there, it's relatable to life. You've tried to get that perfect Christmas gift for that special someone and everything just goes wrong. Sinbad co-stars in this in a movie that is just very heartfelt, Christmas chaos, lots of funny shenanigans in there, and one of my favorite quotes ever by Arnold, put the cookie down. Coming up next, my next favorite Christmas movie, Home Alone. Yes, Home Alone. Definitely one of the top Christmas movies of all time. Macaulay Culkin stars as Kevin McAllister, who accidentally gets stuck at home after his family goes on vacation, and he has to take down a couple of robbers, played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Comedy gold here. It's, it's a true Christmas gem. It's not exactly a story about Christmas, but it it's just, for some reason, it's really resonated as a real good Christmas film throughout the years. Now, some honorable mentions. Of course, everybody has to talk about a Christmas story, the classic story of Ralphie who just wants a Red Ryder BB gun and everybody tells him that he's going to get his eyes shot out. I can relate because I've wanted gifts in the past where I was just told no and all I would ask for that whole entire year is please let me get this and then finally I would get it. That happened before in the past with like the Super Nintendo and other things like that and Ralphie's story is just so awesome. I know they made a sequel but we don't talk about that. Gremlins. Now it's a horror Christmas movie and it's 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 very classic everything about it just so nostalgic for me it barely missed out being in my top five it's an honorable mention only because my number one holds the most nostalgia for me as far as a Christmas story goes my number one movie is a Charlie Brown Christmas just because it's so sweet and charming the story behind it is just so awesome. You really don't see any Christmas things that tell the true spirit of what Christmas is about. Not to get on a religious tangent and <laughs> make some people upset. Who doesn't enjoy Linus's speech about, you know, what Christmas is really about? This animation just holds up so much in a time where, you know, people are looking for hope and people just want to capture that magic and it's the perfect movie to show to your kids. And well guys, I just wanted to give you guys just a quick little video about my top 5 Christmas movies. I am so glad that 2016 was such a great freaking year. Mm, one of the best. And I'm so thankful for each and every single one of you guys support. Happy holidays. I wish you nothing but the best in 2017. Happy fucking new year. So yeah guys, that's it. If you've made it this far in the Christmas marathon, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I hope whatever you're doing this holiday, you're with loved ones. And if you're not, I hope you know that you are loved and appreciated. You're not alone. Even if you feel you're alone, even if you feel that, you know, you have no friends or you're just, you know, you're not in the Christmas mood. Know that you have a place here and know that, you know, the new year's upon us. It's a clean slate. And it's a chance, a new chance every year. You're appreciated. You're not alone. God bless you. Merry Christmas. And thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I'll see you next time.